My most signature painting uh, with well over 500 works is this piece that's on the easel right now. It's called Florida's Forgotten Coast. And it's no accident that it's called Florida's Forgotten Coast. When uh, I was working on this, I was uh, I had the interest uh, of doing a coastal series, and this was the second piece. I'd already created one, uh, very different than this piece, but I already created one. Um, with the spoonbills in it. So this one I was uh, was interested in doing something on the coast that could kind of depict Florida's uh, maybe early days or pristine coast. Uh, it's sort of with a nostalgic kind of a feel. And I was drawn up into a particular area of the panhandle uh, as, a, uh, as a place to get my inspiration. At the same time I was working on, uh, on that thought, uh, the state of Florida had been uh, well, I guess I should say five counties in the state of Florida were interested in that in that panhandle area um, of naming their coast, Florida's Forgotten Coast. They wanted the state to get behind them and help do a lot of the promotions and the financing and the literature and that type of thing. And um, uh, they had heard, I suppose it was one of the newspapers there and one of the guys from the newspaper had heard that I was creating a series of coastal works and specifically one that represented those five counties. And so I was called into those meetings and asked to bring this particular painting. Um, they did wind up using it and that's why it is called Florida's Forgotten Coast. In my own life, I was studying a lot of Leonardo da Vinci's writings at the time. And in every artist's life, there are growth periods where they um, really are in, in, in some kind of a mode of discovery. And I was working on the, the idea of composition. That's, a, that's an extremely important arena. And I've come now to sort of coin some terminology in some of my writings on that. It's the place where I call principles and attributes meet, but not for competition, for they must join hands in a total cooperative effort to win the game of beauty. I discovered that with Da Vinci's attributes. They're all, there are 10 of them. And they're all opposite attributes. Nearness and in, in, uh, in, in farness. Um, motion into rest. It's these kind of things. Uh, uh, light and dark. And so I took all those 10 elements. I was pretty fascinated by them. And I thought, I wonder if I can get all those into one arena. Uh, as artists, we already work with elements of design. We got line, light, color, texture, space, and form. So I took all the elements, I took all the attributes, and I put them into the into the this arena. This painting is a result of that. I'll explain it in just a second. But before I go into that a little bit further, I was also working in watercolor. I had painted two different methods of watercolor, and I had come across a particular artist who was from Canada at the time, who was one of Canada's uh, finest wildlife painters, very intricate, very beautiful, very skilled painter. And I did a one-day workshop, and I didn't come out of there with anything more than one single leaf painted. But I learned a method of how to take gouache and watercolor and integrate them together as a method of painting. So now I've picked up a third method of painting, and uh, when I was creating this piece of work, I was working on French paper, it's 140 pounds, cold press, which makes it have texture. I stretched it, I wet it and stretched it, which restructured the surface of it, which allowed me to do some uh, marvelous things that I couldn't do if I just was to paint on it as I bought it from the store. So all those things were kind of going on. Now, now I want to explain how all that kind of came together in this piece of work. In a painting, uh, you have a, a background, which on this side you can see that is uh, what Da Vinci called fumato, which means sort of smoke or, uh, uh, it, or atmosphere, and there's moisture in the air. You've got a lot of blockage of the visual ability to see clearly anything there of color or detail. So that's a background. The next area is a midground, and that would be this middle ground. It's, it's in the middle between the background and the foreground. This is the foreground where the waves are. On this particular beach, when uh, my wife and I were on, we were walking up and down the beach. We had garbed our initials on the tree. We had a great time working on this piece of work because we were exploring an area of Florida, a very pristine old area of Florida, very quiet, undeveloped, uh, uh, which is what drew us to the place. We had developed many friends there. 
We had been there four different times and I still could not figure out how to paint the painting. If you stood on the beach, you went right down the beach. There was no, 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 it was be, would have to be a vertical painting. Um, so uh, from the highway, it's uh, off of 98, it's beautiful, but you're looking through pines. I didn't want to have pines to be looking through. I wanted to have a clear vision. So I went out into the water. It's finally where I painted it. It's almost, it's almost at a boat level. The eye level for this painting would be where the horizon is, right across there. So all the central action happens in here. But let me go back to explaining what I was saying about how those three planes work in a composition. Using what da Vinci called rhythm and flow, I'm, I'm, I took the waves as they come around and I overlapped them. This is an Italian concept for what's called chiaroscuro. It's the idea of creating an illusion of depth by overlapping as well. So these pine roots are out in the water. They're from the pine trees that have eroded along the shore. So using the rhythm and the flow of the, of the shoreline and the pine roots and then the, this one big move that takes you over to this side, I created a barrier island. It's not really there in that area, but I created it because I wanted movement. And those are, that's what I'm going after in this composition is movement. So the viewer comes around you hit the midground right here. It, you still got further to go, so you're not going anywhere beyond that until you come back over here. By what Da Vinci called position and design, I've arranged three different overlapping trees, two pines and one palm. The one in the back has fallen down, and even this stump is placed where it, all these are placed exactly where I want them. So I've positioned these as much as I could to be natural. The bird takes you up, that's the wing flap on the movement up and over all the debris. You're back down, you're back up, and you're back out the same way you came in. Those are two very extreme comp uh, compositional movements in a painting. It's one of the most complicated paintings I've ever done. It took me 850 hours of work. It was painted probably about no bigger than this. Very complex. So now, uh, there have been many people who've collected this, many Florida enthusiasts who have just incredibly enjoyed this piece, a particular piece of work. We've heard the stories of so many people that come up, they're moved by the painting. I want to now ask you or ask you to join those enthusiasts, and I'm going to invite you to appreciate this work uh, or any other of my 500 works that I have created over the of my lifetime of painting Florida.